Hey everyone, this is S and Pratt, and today we're going to talk about junk slabs. Junk slabs are a very hot topic right now, and for good reason. There's an increased supply of graded cards. There's just a lot of demand to put your cardboard into plastic. That's why you see so many new grading companies starting up every day. In my opinion, there's just more people in collectibles now than at any point in time. So because of that increased participation growth, this larger amount of supply has some people worried and asking the question, are some of these cards just going to be junk? Are there going to be cards that are graded that just aren't worth anything, that doesn't add a value, that'll be less valuable than the ungraded counterpart? I think a good starting point for this is where did that term junk slab originate? Because if we look at the origin of it, maybe we can learn something from that. So in my opinion, it originated in the late 80s, early 90s sports boom, bubble burst, whatever you want to call it. What happened back then is you had a lot of actual boomers come back in and collect the cards they grew up with. But the difference is that was organic demand for maybe one to two rookie cards, like your 79 Gretzky or your 86 Fleer Jordan. Then in the early 90s, because of this demand, these companies started looking at each other and they're like, you think of what I'm thinking, Tops? Yeah, you think of what I'm thinking, Fleer? You think of what I'm thinking, Score? Let's do like five to ten different variants now of the same exact athlete every single year. So not only did you have numerous variants under one company, you had multiple companies doing the same thing. And some of these companies that maybe lasted a year or two during that era in the early 90s. So in short, you had two big things happening. One, a bunch of companies printing a bunch of cards. Two, a bunch of cards that simply nobody wanted. Where in Pokemon, both of those are pretty much the opposite. You have one company printing all the cards, and I would say most cards people do want. In fact, I think that's why you had the crazy scalper situation last year, is because a lot of people just wanted to go to the store and buy the cards that they wanted. And because of Team Rocket and all the flipping, ripping, dipping, scalping, and everything that was going on, it made it a lot harder, because there's a lot more room there to make instant money. So, the bottom line is, is all that demand, that fire that exists in 2020, it was doused a bit by the increased supply lately so the bottom line is pokemon is still under one umbrella you can throw in hyper rare secret rare all these other versions it's nowhere near what is in sports in sports today you're probably this is probably even conservative you're probably looking at like 50 rookie variants of an athlete you know it's not just like the nba does all the cards or the nhl does all the cards that's what it would have to be to be in to analogous to pokemon it's just Pokemon doing all the cards. So therefore, the fundamentals are different from what happened in the 90s. You don't have the same setup. It's completely different. You have one company doing it, and majority of the cards I think people would want, or I would argue that majority of the cards printed people do want to collect. But for other people, they're like, okay, but still, right? You had 2020 explosion, Logan Paul, all this exposure. So let's talk about that. What happened during 2020? Talk about this in Patreon over and over again. So we're about to get a little hashtag free Patreon right here. What happened in 2020 with all the actual YouTubers and blue checkmark guys who know how to edit videos and do this for a living? They simply exposed the hobby to new people. When that BuzzFeed article came across the screen of that person, they went down the easy roads of either going to their closet and getting out their childhood collection, which is probably mostly Watsy or whatever they grew up with, and or going to the store and buying whatever's on the shelf. Those are the two easy main options. And sure enough, if you look at the data from every day, few days, or week of what cards are being listed on eBay, it is these two categories by a long shot. It's low to mid grade Watsy and modern graded Pokemon. Those are the worst offenders for the backlog. And it's no surprise, it shouldn't be a surprise at least, but it's no surprise because those are very easy roads and easy access. So I remember talking about the backlog before and, you know, doing a little tongue in cheek hint at what do you think is going to be in that backlog? You think it's going to be any of these guys back here? Think it's going to be any cards with less than 10 copies? You know, we could do the math on which cards it's probably going to be. And here we are. We're starting to see some of those test scores come back. And sure enough, it's going to be those easy to access categories from a lot of newcomers who came into the game, which is the natural thing to do. It's what I did when I started before I lived in this beautiful grandma house. I started with Watsy, what I grew up with, and whatever was on the shelf at the time, which was like the EX era, I just would go to Target, buy some of that, go get some of my Watsy stuff. That's what I did for like the first year or so. So that's the natural progression. That's the obvious pattern that's happening right now. And that's what you can expect for this whole junk slab worry. So if you do think that there's going to be a junk slab, cards that are probably slab that don't add value, it's most likely going to be in those categories. Now, I think there's a strong difference, though, because if you go to 90 sports, 
there's just stuff that still to this day has no added value. You know, even like stuff like this you can have a 10, all the 10s in the world you want to throw on the label and it doesn't do anything, you know, because again, those cards have no demand. Where in Pokemon, I think a lot of these cards do have demand. You just have more of an increased supply situation rather than like this junk slab too many cards that nobody wants type deal. It's just an increased supply versus demand. I think it's a lot more simplified. Another idea I want to throw out there is that the low cost grading, you know, that's another thing that happened about eight months or so, we'll say a year, a year-ish, somewhere in there. When PSA started to really ramp up the backlog and things started to slow down to the point where they closed, the new companies came in and were like, we're going to seize the opportunity, Carpe Diem. And they're like, yeah, here's the low cost grading. The problem with that is low cost grading usually yields low quality. Again, are you going to see one of these guys in the five to 10 to $20 grading tier? Probably not. You're probably going to get again a lot of the worst offender easy access things so why i'm mentioning this idea is because for people who submitted for that low cost grading or whatever when those cards return you're going to be entering an ocean of competition you know your 7.5 like like magneton hollow you know is going to go up against now probably like 50 to 100 others you know out there on ebay you're going to be competing with a lot more people because that low cost no challenge move is what most people can do. It's what most people can access. So therefore, you have a much lower opportunity. The opportunity in 2020 was if you already had the cards in hand, you could sell the Pikachu Jungle EV for like a thousand dollars. I can't even like say it without laughing because that was so crazy. But you know, that was part of the reality. That's a good supply demand lesson. You know, at that time, if you had that card in that moment, time the market well, you'd have done well. But if you submitted a ton of those when it was at a thousand, you're going to get a ton of them back. You're going to have like a thousand quantity that's all going to go reverse. You know, so that's just the general answer is that when you eliminate that challenge, when there's no challenge, everybody in their dog can do it. And therefore, you know, you literally just saturate everything, market, demand, all of it. A couple of ideas I could throw at you to really like hammer that home. I remember in 2017, we went through this before. PSA 9 Watsi Hollows had a crazy AP ratio. It was so incongruent, meaning that the ungraded cost with grading was higher than the already graded 9. Like, that makes no sense. It's like taking crazy pills. And that incongruency, of course, played out over time. You know, if you're just patient, this is a moment in the market, it'll probably change. You know, at that time, I put my money where my mouth is, and I was like, these $30 to $50 PSA 9 Watsi Hollows are unbelievably underpriced, so I'm just going to buy a ton of them. And here we are, of course, they're higher because of those fundamentals of understanding, you know, the AP ratio was way off and you might have some of that today. There might be a buy opportunity, but it might not be a nine. Maybe it's a seven, maybe it's something else, but you'll probably have that incongruency again that creates a buy opportunity. Last thing I want to close with is the first S and Pratism ever. Older, rare, mint or better. Older rare mint or better is something that's not only applicable to Pokemon, I think it's true for a ton of things in life. And if you go through the line of older, rare, mentor, what are each one of those? They're a challenge. It's probably harder to find an older card than is a new one. It's probably hard to find a rarer card than is a more common one. It's probably hard to find a mentor card than is a played one, especially when you're talking vintage. Each one of these is a hurdle. Each one of them is a challenge. So when you have cards like these that are maxed out in every category, that better is just like 72 font and bold italicized. But when you eliminate all those challenges, when you have no older rare mentor better whatsoever, you're left with nothing. No challenge equals no interest. So tying back in the first point about the actual junk slab era, that's because there was no challenge. You actually have videos of guys who just like explore banded factories and buildings who literally stumbled across pallets of 90s hockey cards. They're just worthless. Like they might as well just be the building materials on the ground that they walked over, you know? Because they're that worthless. Because again, no challenge equals no interest. Saturation is the death of interest. So that is the final point is that older, rare, mentor, better is one of those universal truths that will play out yet again in the same cyclical thing we experienced before in 2016, 17. We're going through it again now, and it might be longer, it might be more prolonged than it was back then, five years ago. But you're probably going to have a lot of the same opportunity pop up. In my opinion, I think we're only in the beginning of some of these cards. There's definitely already some that are in a junk era or junk category. And I'm sure, again, these common things people can do, the easy things new collectors can do that I even did, you know, going back to your closet in the store, that's probably going to be the largest supply for what's in the backlog. I think for most seasoned people at this point, it's common sense. 
but just getting it out there that this is what you're probably going to expect for the short term. There will probably be some cards that might be junk, but it's it's not going to be, in my opinion, like the sports era. You know, I think in my overall, for me at least, I see this as more of a short term market condition rather than what happened in the 90s sports where it was like these cards have nothing, no future where there's definitely some cards I'm even buying that I'm like, yeah, this one's a little bit low right now. I'm going to buy it, wait two, three, five, ten 10 years and see what it looks like down, down the road. So there you go. That's what I have on Junk Slabs. Very fun topic to talk about. It includes a lot of ideas and patterns and things that happen all the time in collectibles. So it's always a nice one to come back to. But I saw a lot of people talking about it. That's my take. That's the information or things that came to mind for it. So as usual, you know the deal. Let me know how I feel. That's pretty much it, guys. Till next time.